Through the Eyes of Another Pony by Cards Laughter, Unrevised Equestria Daily Version, Chapter 1. Most people do not take sudden change well. I figure I work with it pretty easily as long as the change isn't bizarre. Waking up outside on the grass was a first for me, but I've been known to have some pretty wild parties at my place and my stepsister is never kind enough to drag me to my bed when I do pass out. Despite the fact that I've held her hair slash head out of the toilet during similar occasions. Still, I was not hung over, surprisingly enough. Not even that groggy beyond the usual deep sleep clinging to me. Indeed, had I been much more comfortable, I'd have probably rolled over and proceeded to greedily yank more Z's into my morning. I wiped at my eyes with my hoof and decided that at very least crawling to my bed would be in order. Then I realized I just wiped at my eyes with a hoof and not my usual hand consisting of five digits. I'm not sure why, but my first thought consisted of wondering how I didn't injure my eyes, scraping at them with a hoof. Then, when I first told myself that I had finally slipped into insanity, it had taken a while to be sure. But, I mean, come on, who wakes up with hoofs instead of hands, right? That's just nonsense. Well, nonsense or not, telling myself that my sanity was taking an unscheduled absence for some reason, I've got plenty, I assure you, was not making it any better and it certainly wasn't getting me off this dewy grass. So I decided to play ball and examined the hoof as I got up. It was definitely a hoof, an ash-gray hoof. I could tell from the shape and having seen some hoofs in my time, you see. I then held up my other hoof to make a comparison before unceremoniously crashing to the ground. Ow! I remarked before shaking my head in confusion and getting back up on all fours. Note to self, ponies cannot elevate themselves off the ground without the use of their front legs holding them up. I suppose this is where I'm supposed to double-take and freak out because I'm a pony. I'm not going to lie, folks. I'm lazy. Not incredibly lazy, but yeah. I'm up there when it comes to doing things that are mentally draining. When it comes to the mentally exhausting stuff, I just don't want to do it and freaking out is very much one of those things. I mean, it's up there with doing your taxes and attending those stupid webinars. So, rather than lose my mind over that, I sat down exactly the way ponies don't and examined my hoofs again, this time keeping at least one on the ground at any given time. So, I'm a pony, I muttered out loud, still trying to sell the possibility of insanity to myself. This has terrible implications. With that in mind, I decided to focus on my surroundings, namely to find a mirror so I could examine my poniness and be as appreciative as I could, should be. I quickly deducted that I was in Ponyville. Big surprise. Shockingly enough, though, it was early in the morning and not during the hustle and bustle of the day, which would have made my experience even more disorientating. Whatever sick bastard did this to me, I was grateful for that much, I noted. Orienting myself further, I realized that I was actually in the town square where all the fillies and colts set up shop. Good, some familiar ground. That's when I had that feeling you get when you realize that you know something you shouldn't. Such as landscape and geography of a little girl's TV show. I kinda giggled in an internal fashion before finally shaking it off and putting on my serious face. Perhaps I should do something sensible and go see Twilight as a voice of Pony Reason, I mentally suggested to myself. That's when the first epic battle took place. See, I'm a yin and yang sort of person deep down. There are two parts of me at war at all times and because they are so evenly matched I normally come off as a bland person when first met. For future reference we will call these halves laughter and stoic. I am not even going to bother explaining what they represent since it should be quite obvious. So back to this battle that literally caused me to sit in Ponyville Town Square for nearly seven minutes and do absolutely nothing but stare into the distance like a lunatic. 
Lefter wanted to go find Pinkie Pie and throw fruit at her in an attempt to get her to throw fruit back, thus leading to the great produce showdown that would forever go down as the most wasteful piece of hilarity to have ever taken place in Equestria without a stage, ticket price and trained performers. Stoic, however, is a very persuasive fellow. It's his specialty, you see, being the voice of perfect and sound reason. And while I just ran off to Sugarcube Corner, Stoic was very adamant that I'd at least familiarize myself a bit more with my setting rather than run off and cause an incident without fully understanding my the consequences. Besides, Pinky might be allergic to papayas, and I don't think my conscience could handle bringing harm to any pony. And I'd still get to meet one of my favorite ponies if I went to Trop Twilight's library anyway. I know, it didn't take seven minutes to process that for you, but trust me, it was like trying to solve a calculus equation with the stereo blasting some death metal and the winter wrap-up song at all the same time. Pure mental chaos that eventually faded with time, to be sure. With that, I decided to pull out a cigarette, lit it and started to walk towards what I felt was likely the direction to get to the tree library that housed a certain purple pony. Then I did my first actual double take. I'll just list out the questions and thoughts that went through my head rather than try to explain just how it all gushed out of my cognitive process. 1. Holy bit, I'm a pony and I'm smoking. 2. Holy bit, cigarettes in Equestria. 3. I am such a corrupting influence and I haven't even spoken to any pony yet. 4. Where the hay did that pack of cigarettes go? 5. How the hay did I just lit that cigarette? 6. Where the hay did that pick of cigarettes come from? 7. Where is the nearest ashtray? 8. I can't smoke here. Think of the ponies. 9. If I try and quit, I might lose my temper at a pony. 10. I'm sorry, you've thrown off the Emperor's groove. This caused yet another mental foray within myself and I eventually decided to just smoke it and bury the filter later. I know smoking is bad. I don't do it because I like it. I hate it actually. I do it because I'm addicted and attempts made at quitting have led to murderous tempers. I am a Zen master with having had a smoke in the last four hours, but without them I devolve into something hideous and generally not fit for human society, much less pony society. I don't know what it's called, I just know that scientists refuse to do a study on the matter due to how dangerous it would be, and no existing grant is willing to shell out that kind of hazard pay. Continuing on, I looked around at my cartoon surroundings in the earliest of dawn lighting and wondered how the physics worked. I've seen ponies pick up paintbrushes with a single hoof before, and then I remembered Spike yanking a gem out of a body pocket once. Maybe that's where I put my cigarettes? I decided to give it a try and just randomly attempted to pull out the box. Worked on the first try. I'm still not sure if this excited me or angered me, but sure enough, in my ash-gray hoof was a silver and cyan box of Merboro Smooth 100s. I stared to go into another breakdown over this, but I realized those were extremely tiring and time-consuming. Thus, I decided not to. Merboro, I said with a snicker, as I spotted a very familiar library in the distance putting the box of cigarettes back. My smile widened. I began to run, gallop, towards the big tree before stopping just at the door and wondering just how early it was. I pulled out my smartphone and clicked the button on it to check the time. 6.52 a.m. I put it away before doing another double take. Just how much crap did I have on me? Ugh, whatever. Almost seven in the morning. Applejack is definitely awake right now. Pinky probably sleeps in, being the party animal that she is. Twilight, however, I was not sure. She was something of a night owl last time I had checked, so she would be a late sleeper. Spike's an early riser at least, right? Damn the torpedoes! 
I muttered before clopping at the door. Surely enough, the door opened, and there he was, two foot nothing. Well, it seemed that high to me anyway, and staring up at me was a slightly confused yet welcoming purple smile. The only dragon to have ever achieved pony amounts of cute. Spike. Can I help you? He asked politely, regarding me with an increasingly strange look. Oh, um... I was a little caught off guard, but I eventually recovered and asked what I felt was a perfectly sensible question. I'm new in town, and I heard this was a local library. Being something of a foreign scholar, and I wanted to pursue the contents, but I wasn't sure if it was available for just any pony. Is it public or private, my good sir? Spike stared at me as though I were completely crazy. This, in turn, made me go from feeling incredibly clever to equally stupid. I'm not used to feeling stupid, you see. I'm not trying to boast here, but I am an extremely capable and intelligent person when I put my mind to a task, and doing the occasional stupid thing actually causes me to laugh rather than actually feel stupid. This time I felt it. Full-on stupid. Who's a silly pony? I am. I can't say I cared for it. What do you mean, is it public or private? He finally asked. This actually brought a sense of relief. Spike must not have been aware of the difference. Oh, well, you see, a public library is open to every pony to come and check out books for a few days at a time, while a private library is only available to a select group of ponies who have pre-existing affiliations with the library or its staff in some way. I tried to elaborate neatly. Spike wasn't an idiot, right? Oh! His eyes widened greatly before becoming skeptical again. You mean a library that gives its books away? That doesn't sound like any library I've ever heard of. Oh, well, you see, the pony springs them back after a few days. Basically, the process works like this. A. Ponies come in to, to check out a book after registering with the library staff. B. Ponies read the books for the, the few days they have them checked out or until they're finished, whichever comes first. C. They bring them back to the library for other ponies to come read so the library can continue sharing its wealth of knowledge without ever losing its books for more than a H A N D F or er, hoof full of days at a time. That was when I saw a different purple hat poke around the door frame inquisitively. I was instantly overwhelmed with awesome. My cigarette fell out of my mouth. Ugh, I still had it? As I took in Twilight Sparkle. Naturally, we know what Twilight looks like, and it's not like I was beauty struck. It was just the entire concept of one of the main six in my actual presence. Another m mind-blowing moment. This was becoming quite the theme of my day. I've never heard of these public libraries. Twilight gave me a suspicious look. Where are you from? After composing myself and stomping out my cigarette, I smiled happily. I'm from a different world. Hence the whole foreign scholar spiel. I'm actually looking for you, Twilight Sparkle. I need your help. I'm kind of long way from home. Twilight boogled a moment at the fact that I knew her name, but, being the sensible gal that she is, did not panic and simply stepped aside. Come in, please. With that, I trotted in, making sure I was careful to wipe my feet, hoofs, damn it, on the mat before finding the nearest bench and firmly planting my plot on it in the exact same fashion that ponies do not, again. It smelled like a musty old library, as one should would expect. That fact alone was pretty cool. I actually breathed in several times, smiling dreamily as I made sure to memorize the smell. Spike and Twilight stared at me like I was from outer space. Technically, I probably was, but that didn't make me feel any better and, as I realized, just how dumb I looked. Um, I cleared my throat, blushing somewhat, I'm sure. I, uh, I don't know how to say this, other than I'm not a pony in all actuality, and that my presence probably isn't a good thing. Though I won't lie, me being here is not upsetting me in the least. 
The purple pony and purple dragon exchanged a purple glance before looking back at me. Twilight gave me a skeptical smile. You don't look especially different from any other unicorn I've seen. My jaw dropped before I slapped at my forehead with my hoofs. Not hands, and was met with a rush of joy, as I felt the ivory, I'm assuming it was ivory, for all I know it's actually made of incredibly hard cheese, horn poking out of my forehead. No way, I'm a friggin' unicorn! I gasped before hopping up and focusing like a madman. I wonder what spells I can cast. I'm fully capable of believing he's an alien. Spike stated flatly before walking for the stairs, having lost interest in me. Let me know if you want to capture and study him, Twilight. I'm going to find some breakfast. Spike, manners! She snapped at the baby dragon before turning back to me. Okay, so you weren't aware of the horn in your head. And you're how old? Twenty-three, actually, I said, still straining as hard as I could to make some unicorn magic happen. I won't lie, folks. Laughter was in control here, and even Stoic was kinda curious to see where this would go. Are you trying to cast a spell? Twilight asked helpfully, backing away slowly. I gave up with a sigh. Mentally tiring activities were in abundance today, it seemed. Then I was stuck with an idea and pulled out a cigarette from my nothing, buddy pocket just sounds weird, and lit it with a bit of fire that came from my horn. There wasn't a lighter. It just lit on its own, practically. I was a pyromancer. Picture the greatest day of your life and multiply it by three. Yeah, you're getting close to just how cool this day was, but still not there yet. Awesome! I gasped with a typical awesome face. I control fire. What's my cutie mark look like? Um... Twilight was obviously starting to have serious doubts about my sanity, and, to be honest, I had already come to terms with the loss of it some time ago. I did an adorable spin that Applebloom would have been proud of and spotted it. It was a shield made of orange fire with a faded in blue center. It also seemed as though I were ash gray all over, which made sense since I didn't know of any ponies that were multicolored on their coats. My tail, however, was flame blue with a fiery orange tip. I kinda felt woozy after that. I mean, the sheer amounts of cool piling into a single hour was going to overdose at this rate and likely kill me or render me comatose. I needed to get a grip, though. Laughter had his fun now and it was time for serious business again. I stopped behaving like a buffoon before sighing and turning back to turn twilight with a sheepish smile. Sorry, this is all just so very new to me. You see, I only got here about half an hour ago and it's been a lot to take in. Twilight looked relieved that I was actually somewhat sensible again and simply nodded. It's okay, just let me get you a drink. What do you like? Tomato juice, milk, sweet tea, water, in that order. I rattled off, avoiding anything ponies might not consume, like, I don't know, blood or beef juice. Whatever, I was being cautious. When she returned with a glass of milk on a floating plate, I smiled happily and took the glass with two hoofs, which is a lot harder than it sounds, and after thinking about it, it sounds hard, but yeah, harder than that. Throwing it back with gusto. It does the body good. Well, I can tell you're not used to being a unicorn, she pointed out with a worried smirk. Why didn't you just levitate it with your magic? Like I said, I've only been a unicorn for half an hour, I reminded her before taking a drag of my cigarette. Crap! The sudden realization that I was smoking in Twilight's house sank in immediately. Another little piece of information about myself, I do not smoke indoors. At all. At least not without a huge amount of motivation to do otherwise. I don't care if I'm at someone's house who does smoke indoors. It's a sign of disrespect to the home, if not the homeowner, and I am a very respectful person. I immediately doused the cigarette on my tongue and stashed it back to into my nothing without a second thought, blushing terribly. My shame level was somewhere beyond 9000, if it were at all measurable. Sorry, 
I muttered sheepishly. You just burnt your tongue. She gasped, staring at me like I was crazy. She did that a lot, and I'm still certain I'm to blame for it. No, no, I refused, sticking my tongue out to her to show her how wrong she was. I'm an experienced smoker, so I know how to do that without actually hurting myself. It's actually not that hard. It just tastes terrible. What was that, anyway? It kind of smelled... Well... She was trying to be polite and think of a kind way to tell me that cigarettes reeked. I know, they smell terrible. I'll explain some other time. It's not that important right now. What is important is discerning if my presence here has any determinal effect on Equestria as a whole beyond my potential harmful knowledge. Assuming you're not actually crazy, right? She pointed out that damn metaphorical elephant standing in the middle of the room being fat and obvious. Screw metaphorical elephants. I'm not sure of which I'd rather it be, I stated honestly with a nod. But the more I realize I've yet to do something out of character for me, the more I'm fairly certain some greater power is just screwing with me. That said, where do we go from here? Well, the first thing we need to do is start sharing some basic information, Twilight nodded before picking a nearby bench and lounging onto it. That will give me enough information to find out whether or not you're making this up. So what do you actually look like, assuming you're not a pony? Um, actually think of Spike, I said, instantly grasping the bipedal form of the baby dragon. Now we'll try and mold and detail from there. Hmm, no tail. Five fingers instead of four. Also, instead of scales, humans have soft, smooth, mostly hairless skin that have color tone ranges of pink, orange, brown, white, black and mixtures thereof. Then, instead of those spines on his head, give him a pony's mane with color tones ranges of black, brown, white, blonde, darker reds. Now make him about six feet tall and that's the basic idea. I suppose if I, if you wanted to, I could ramble on about how many different ways humans can look, but that would take an entire day on its own. I kid you not. As diverse as ponies can get, they really have nothing on humans in how different they appear. Twilight blinked, utterly caught off guard at how quickly I was to able to answer the question and with such detail before smiling a tad reluctantly. We're going to be here for a while, aren't we? I sighed with a wistful smile. It really wouldn't hurt my feelings. So what do you want to know? And we burned about the next two hours talking about Earth. Sometimes I simply had to deny her answers, explaining that until I have a better understanding of where I was, I couldn't risk telling her. Things such as war, murder, or other grim dark subjects I tried to avoid and would even flatly refuse to approach anything related. I was surprised that she was not appalled at the fact that humans were omnivores, though I think the fact that ponies were not considered food to the general public was what assuaged her fears on the matter. I told of agriculture, the education system, fast food, fashion, automobiles, and even computers. She thought I was making up that last part until I showed her my smartphone. I had to take it away from her to get back to the discussion, but not before promising to her to let her look at it later. I mostly did so to keep her from seeing all the MLP content on it, and her end up thinking I was some crazy stalker. Ha, aren't we all? I found it particularly amusing that Twilight was utterly flawed at how humans could predict the weather based on certain patterns and fronts. I admit I don't know much on the subject, but I explained that even though we don't control the weather, specialists on the matter allowed humanity to work around it quite nicely with the occasional exception. And no, humans don't have magic. We have sums, which are as close to magic as you can get, in my opinion. Then I turned the tables on her and had her explain Equestria to me, how Earth ponies actually had magic that let them use their hooves and tails as prehensile limbs and were actually much better at it than unicorns, who mostly relied on their horns magic for such interaction. That made sense actually, since I had seen Applejack do lasso tricks with her tail, I silently concluded.
Pegasi were able to use their magic to make themselves lighter, explaining the physics behind such small wings propelling ponies into the air, and that the same magic allowed them to directly interact with the weather, as well as certain special talents. Talking about cutie marks and names that seemed to pertain to significance towards a pony's special talent took up quite a bit of time in itself. Twilight assured me, though, that a pony was free to choose her special calling, even if it was only subconsciously, and that fate would sometimes magically cause such things as names and coloring of one's mane and coat to reflect that talent. Sometimes it would even be a hint to help them realize it, but never was a pony's special talent influenced by their name or colors. Clear as mud to you, too? Finally, the interruption came in the form of hay, lovingly served to us by Spike. I grimaced. Being a pony does not mean I want to eat hay. Sorry, even if some pony part of me inside found the hay appetizing, the real me did not, and the real me gets the final say. Twilight looked at the clock. Oh, wow, we've been at this for a while, haven't we? She laughed a bit before taking a bite out of the hay. Thank you, Spike. Spike smiled at her before looking at me inquisingly. So, what aliens don't eat hay? Nope, I stated firmly before sighing. I needed to at least try and be polite. I will try it, though. Just don't expect me to be blown away. With that, I took a chomp and my eyes widened considerably. It tasted exactly what you would expect hay to taste like. Big, dried grass. It tasted so bad. It's hay! I found myself utterly amused by the entire concept of such horrible food eaten just because ponies are supposed to eat it, even though these ponies were obviously superior to the ponies back on Earth and could make the connection of, hey, this hay tastes like crap. What about hay is so appetizing to these ponies, I asked myself incredulously as I began laughing with my mouth full. Twilight and Spike stared at me as I literally laughed my way through an entire bite of hay. I couldn't help it. It was just funny. I'm eating hay, and even though I'm a pony, and I should like it, nothing could be further from the truth. After swallowing, I shook my head with a chuckle. That was terrible. Do you have a kitchen? I'm sorry, but you guys need to try something with a bit of flavor. Spike seemed extremely offended, but was cut off by Twilight, who obviously was curious to see what would happen. Of course! Spike, please show Mr... We all saw the letter-heavy silence fill the air, as we all realized that I had yet to give them my name. She gave me a hesitant smile and waited for me to supply her with one. Well, I can give you a name that I make up to fit in with the ponies, or I can just give you my real name, which is, to be honest, really isn't that exciting to me. I offered, shrugging somewhat. Whichever you prefer, I suppose, she replied, laughing at Ted in response to my nonchalant approach to rather significant details in my life. Let's go with a pony name for now. Hmm, uh, let's go with something cool and related to fire in some way. Suggestions, lady and dragon? I decided to get a little help. Yeah, hot air! Spike said with a smirk, earning a glare from Twilight. I laughed. It was pretty clever, and, to be fair, I had insulted Spike's cooking. How about Firefly? Twilight gave a helpful smile. I grimaced. Dash's beta name. Uh, I don't think so. Not because it's a bad idea, but, yeah, trust me when I say it, that could cause problems, and uh, that's the last thing I want to do. Spitfire? Speck suggested with a draconian shrug. That's the lead pony of the Wonderbolts, I pointed out, not sure if they were aware or not. She might take offense. Well, your cutie mark is a fiery shield. Twilight tapped her chin with a pensive hoof. Yeah, but Pinkie Pie's cutie mark is a bunch of balloons, I pointed out instantly. So, really, it can be whatever I like, I suppose. Twilight gave me a suspicious glance, probably catching on to the fact that she had never mentioned Pinkie Pie or her cutie mark. I suppose so. Bah, I can't sink on an empty stomach, I said with a huff and got up off the bench, jumping to my hoofs rather overdramatically. Spike, 
to the kitchen. Have you ever heard of Lomian? No, he responded flatly and proceeded to saunter away, leaving me somewhat deflated. His lack of enthusiasm simply would not do. As such, I picked him up by his spines and tossed him onto my back, galloping away in the general direction he had aimed for. Hey, hey, watch it! Be careful with him! I've only got one! I heard Twilight call out to me jokingly. Just sit tight, you'll want to see this. I promised him before spotting the place of business that I had been looking for. Yes! Now, Spike, I'm going to work incredibly fast. I need you to keep up, and I'll need quick responses on where to find ingredients and cooking utensils. Uh, okay, I I'll try, he said, my fervor having dispelled his disinterest and replaced it with hesitant curiosity. Good. First thing I need is a large hand handkerchief. I demanded, to which Spike directed me towards a certain drawer that had an assortment of rags, handkerchiefs, and potholders. I snatched one out, whipped it over my head to help with any sweating or loose hair, and tied it tight with a bit of unicorn magic that I didn't even realize I was using. To quote a certain white pony with fabulous royal purple hair, it was on. And... It was. Like magic, I tell you. My mind was set to a task, and I simply had to get it done. Spike was a bit slow at first, but as he caught on, he became more eager to participate, and it wasn't long before I had given him a mixing bowl to work at his seat on my back while I zipped about the kitchen eagerly. Then came the fun part, because I learned my second fire trick when I suddenly realized that I had to work with a wood stove. No, not a stove made of wood, a stove heated by wood, you goofs. I tried to light the wood with a little cigarette lighting trick, but that just wasn't going to happen. I barely got one of the corners to flare up red before starting to lose faith. Finally, I became angry and blew at the small cinder as hard as I could. What came next was shocking to both me and Spike, when I had suddenly spat fire into the dry tinder, instantly setting the wood ablaze. Wah! Spike cried out. I've never seen a fire-breathing pony before. Or a fire-breathing anything that wasn't a dragon. Me neither, I exclaimed, just as blown away as he was, until I became distracted with the fact that the fire was not going to be hot enough for what I needed. With that in mind, I tossed the pan full of dirty noodles, noodles up on the stove and began breathing more fire into the fuel. Within moments, I heard the wonderful sound of noodles frying. Several minutes later, I had served up lo mien. Slightly inaccurate since a few key utensils were missing, but it tasted exactly the same, or so I was hoping. I felt so proud of myself as I came out pushing a cart adorned in a matching trio of bowls that I was almost skipping like a little girl. It wasn't entirely complete, I suppose, but I had taken care to throw in lots of cabbage along with some carrot stripes and bean sprouts as well as some makeshift seasoning. It was so vegan there was just no way it would be received poorly by my herbivorous friend. Bon appetit, ma chère. I said with a goofy grin, snagging my bowl with my mouth and setting it down before digging in. Not as good as the authentic stuff, but it was very close. Twilight must have thought it was the strangest looking stuff she had ever seen, because she was very slow to nibble at first, before confirming its quality with an eager bite. Spike, having already tasted it behind my back, he only thought he'd got away with it, had no problem digging in right away. It was when Twilight decided to mimic me and slurp a few noodles from one end of her mouth that she discovered just how messy Lo Mien could be. For when you do that, the noodles have a tendency to fly up and smack you in the face, leaving the oil and sauce all over your visage, which was exactly the case here. Snickering, I pulled the handkerchief off my head and wiped the offending spot on her face, earning an embarrassed smile from her. That was when I met the second pony of the main six, for the door had just burst open and a rainbow-colored streak flew in immediately. I froze. I was mesmerized, more so than I had been by twilight, for you see, this was my favorite rainbow-colored streak.
The coolest of the cool, the fastest of the fast, measurable in increments of one-fifths in just how much awesome she brought to the plate. It was my idol, Rainbow Dash. Twilight, there's a huge crater in Town Square, Rainbow Dash cried before taking in the actual scene, specifically the one where I was serving Twilight lunch and happily cleaning the sauce off her face. Oh, wah! Hey, Twilight, did you get a cold friend? That's so awesome! Before you could say, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Twilight shoved my helping hoof away, blushing brightly, and nearly choked trying to speak through a mouth full of noodles. Ugh. I laughed, quite caught off guard by Rainbow Dash's question and Twilight's immediate reaction. I, wow, that did look compromising. I promise, though, that's not the case. I mean, we haven't even decided on my name yet. Uh, what? Dash was confused, obviously, giving me a sharp, suspicious look and flapping up to closely examine me. Yeah, I don't recognize you at all. You knew? I started to respond, but instead I just kind of stared back at the silent pony's plum-colored eyes in utter awe as it sunk back in whom I was speaking to. Let me put things into perspective for the kids at home. My Google Chrome is RBD-themed. My desktop wallpaper is Rainbow Dash proudly pointing at her chest on a black reflective background. My smartphone's background is a sonic rainbow stretched seven panels wide. My elemental shaman on World of Warcraft is named Rainbow Crash. My Trillion account avatar is Rainbow Dash flailing her tongue about. I bought a black t-shirt with the words RBD 20% cooler in 10 seconds flat, with her cutie mark in a punkish art style in the center. Are you catching my hint? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Has the damn metaphorical elephant in the room become fat and obvious enough yet? Because it's standing right there. Translation, I love this pony. I know I should be ashamed to admit this, yet, strangely, I am not. My awesome day had just reached a critical level and there just wasn't any possible way for to handle any more any longer. There comes a point when you simply have to take a break from per prosperous amounts of cool, awesome and general win. I passed out. Yeah, like a fangirl. Also, I can tell you from the bruise I would later wake up with, no pony was nice enough to catch my heavy plot. You cut me deep, Rainbow Dash. You cut me real deep.